Hello everyone. Happy Tuesday. Happy So What Day and happy webcast day. That's right. Today is the day for our treasured threads faux patchwork webcast over at sewingonline.sulky.com. This is happening at 2 p.m. Eastern time today. So in a couple of hours, we will be going live with Amy Barrickman of Treasured Threads, and she's going to take us through how to use her Treasured Threads faux patchwork fabric panels to create a plethora of projects. We're really going to be focusing on embellishing a denim jean jacket, but there's also a lot of information for embellishing jeans and for creating some new projects. So we will be using these fabric panels with some fantastic sulky thread and creating some really fun stuff in a fraction of the time that it would take for you to piece all these little patchwork pieces together to then create your creations. <laughs> create your creations. I love it. All right. So again, make sure you are registered for our Treasured Threads Faux Patchwork webcast with Amy Barrickman. This is happening again at 2 p.m. Eastern time, and you must be registered in order to view it over there at sewingonline.sulky.com. We also have some fantastic product specials that are happening today only in spirit of our webcast, as well as our kit for this webcast, which is still on sale for the amazing, amazing price of only $39.99. I believe it's $39.99. I always second guess myself when I try to come out there with the exact price because a lot of the times I'm wrong and I get it wrong in my head. So we're going to put that in the comments and in the live chat uh, for uh, this So What here just to make sure I'm not speaking out of turn. All right, so I hope you will all be joining us over there in a couple of hours. And remember, if you can't join us live at 2 p.m. Eastern time, you can always access the entire live stream on demand because while we are live streaming, we are also recording it for posterity. So as soon as the live event ends, I upload that recording to the event page. So if you need to view it tonight or if you need to review the information at all, Maybe you order your kit today and it's not going to come for a little while. You can review the information and watch the entire webcast when it's convenient for you. As long as you are registered, you can access that event in your own personal library at sewingonline.sulky.com. And the content, those events over there, they never expire. So you always have access to all of that content. All you have to do is register for free for today's webcast and you can access that whenever you like. All right, so lots of you saying hello and letting me know where you're from. Be sure to keep saying hello and keep engaging with the live chat today because I have an amazing door prize for today's So What from Sulky of America. It is a six pack of threads in our 50 weight cotton collection. It is called our Patriotic Sampler. And it is labeled as a quilting assortment, but I really love this 50 weight cotton thread for basically my all purpose or general sewing. I even use it for lightweight garment sewing as well. Um, I even use it for bag construction. It is very strong, long staple, 100% cotton thread, Egyptian cotton, um, and you know, if you're a sheet connoisseur, then Egyptian cotton is important to you, just like it is important to me. All right. <laughs> Anyways, that is our giveaway today for one lucky viewer who is commenting, giving me those emojis, um, liking our Facebook page, subscribing to our YouTube channel, all of those good things. That's all you have to do to be eligible to win today's little gift from Sulky. And I will reach out to the winner in, I don't know. A day or so will give people to uh, some time to tune in um, and comment and all those good things. All right. Hi, Shirley from Colorado. Hello from Alaska. Hi from Florida. We are all over the place today. <gasps> Colleen. Colleen just says she registered for the Ireland trip. Fantastic. Yay! 
can't wait to see you again, Colleen. I'm so glad. If you are interested in our Ireland trip, we have extended the uh, registration deadline. So you have until, ooh, it's coming up close here. You have until April 14th to register for this trip. We only have a couple of spots still available on this trip before it sells out. This is our trip with Craft Tours, and it is later this summer. We're going to see all the quintessential um, Ireland tourist destinations. We're also going to be doing some special things that, you know, are off the beaten path that maybe you wouldn't know about or have access to if you took your own trip to Ireland. Plus, you get to meet like-minded people who love to sew, quilt, and create. And I will be taking us through a hands-on sewing workshop while we're there. And we're going to be making something that will commemorate our travels. So I think that this is going to be a trip to remember and a fantastic time. It's a really great deal as well uh, when you take in all the excursions and the fact that we just get on a motor coach in the morning and they take us where we need to go. We don't have to deal with, you know, transportation and all of those logistics are just all planned for us. So stress-free, great time to go, and it's going to be a beautiful trip. Also, later this year, we will be going to Bali. Bali is our trip that we are taking with craft tours in October. And talk about all the quintessential things to do quintessential things to do in Bali. We will be going to an elephant sanctuary. We are going to be going to a batik expo. We are going to an ecat factory. We are going to do lots and lots of fabric centric things on this tour and talk about the shopping. Come ready for shopping because we're going to get amazing deals on all the great fabrics that we like to use for our sewing and quilting projects. So this is going to be another amazing tour you can take with Sulky. And again, I will be taking you through another sewing workshop here in Bali um, where we can create something using some batik fabric that we're going to be making ourselves. So this is another amazing tour happening later this year in October. And you can find out all about these tours on the Craft Tours website, but I linked directly to our tours in the description of today's post. And I highly suggest you use those links if you are interested in more information, or if you contact Craft Tours directly, mention Sulky when you sign up for these tours, because there are a lot, a lot of different options and we wanna make sure that you get on the right one. All right, let's see here. All right, so Treasured Threads, our webcast happening at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Make sure you grab a kit because today is the last day that they are on sale for that amazing deal. They're gonna go up almost 20 bucks um, after today's webcast. And trust me, you, you really can't beat the price that Sulky is, has put on these kits. You get your fabric panel, which includes enough fabric to make tons of different projects that we're gonna go over today. You also get a package of Amy Berrickman's favorite fusible stabilizer, and you also get a assortment pack of Sulky threads that coordinate with your chosen fabric panel. There are two colorways to choose from, and trust me, it's gonna be hard to, de to decide between the two. You might wanna grab both of them while they are on this crazy, crazy sale, and then you'll bump yourself up to free shipping and all is right with the world. All right, let's see. Ooh, we have another really great event. This is our embroidered lounge pants sewing session. So this sewing session is all on demand. It's not a live event at all. And it is ready for viewing on the 17th of April. So next Wednesday, as long as you are registered for our embroidered lounge pants sewing session, you will get an email the day before reminding you that the session is coming up. And then you will get an email the day of telling you that the session is ready for viewing. At that time or any time after, you can go into your library at sewingonline.sulky.com, locate this event and start watching all the videos. Grab your lounge pants pattern, grab your embroidery designs and work your way through making yourself 
a very comfy, luxurious feeling pair of lounge pants. This pattern has a lot of ease built into it, so it's roomier than like a tight fit legging. Um, it's perfect for lounging around, perfect for going out in. You can even sleep in these pants. And once you make one pair, you will want to make several. They have pockets on the side panels. The embroidery, of course, is added to the side panels. And throughout the session lessons, you are going to learn how to add embroidery to all sorts of stretch fabrics without uh, compromising the stretch factor in your fabric. Okay, this is probably the question we get. I don't know if it's the most asked question, but it's way up there. How do I embroider t-shirts? How do I embroider sweatshirts? How do I embroider stretch fabric and not have it come out bulletproof? We want that fabric to move with our body when we're stretching and walking and sitting and, you know, moving. So here is how you're going to do it. Register for that embroidered lounge pants session. You're going to get all the tips and tricks. And you are going to learn about our brand new stabilizer called Action Back. This stabilizer is just life-changing for stretch fabric embroidery. Also, if you've ever tried to embroider those um, moisture-wicking fabrics like golf t-shirts or like a soccer jersey, something like this for your kids perhaps, those fabrics are not only stretchy but slippery as well. So once you embroider them, sometimes no matter how much you stabilize that fabric, it just goes and just puckers right around all the stitching, even though it looks fantastically flat in the hoop. This action back stabilizer is the ticket. And I give you some really great tips for how to use it, how to position your fabric so we're not hooping it, how to position your fabric so you get that design placement perfect every time. All of these things are covered within this session and once you purchase this session over at sewingonline.sulky.com, you get the Pittsburgh walking pants pattern by Amanda's Bundles completely free with purchase of the session. You also get this brand new embroidery design from Sulky. It's called Celestial Zen. It comes in three sizes. You will get all three sizes for free just for signing up for the session. We also are throwing in a free bonus lesson on how to create a copycat pair of leggings if you want a tighter fit pant. So you will learn methods for creating two different styles of pants. You will get a full pattern that's a digital pattern. You'll get tips for using digital patterns, how to size the pants for your figure, how to print out only the size that you want of the pants. There's also several styles to choose from within the same pattern. So you can create a crop pant, a capri pant, a yoga pant. You can even create a shorter biker shorts using the same pattern and you can create tons of modifications. So this is a really, really great value. You get over $15 in freebies for signing up for that session. Um, Actually, I think it's more like $26 in freebies when you consider that bonus content in there. So it's a really great resource to have in your library as well for future viewing. Um, and I think you're really going to enjoy and love these pants and want to live in them. Seriously. Also with the lounge pants, of course, we have a kit for that session as well. The kit includes two yards of the best, most buttery feeling stretch fabric. It's called peached performance fabric. And if you've ever gone to your local fabric store, shout out to local fabric stores. I do love them. But their selection for garment fabrics in particular, let's just say it's not the greatest. If I want to, you know, make my own t-shirts, make my own lounge pants, um, you know, I will say it's gotten a little bit better over the years, especially with the advent of more people sewing cosplay fabrics and things of this nature, sewing their own swimwear. Um, but sometimes there's only two or three options. One is a really outlandish, bizarro print. Let's be real. And then you've got like a white 
and maybe another neutral color to choose from. And a lot of the times it's very lightweight fabric. You hold it up to the light and you could see your hand through it. We don't want to wear that on the lower half of our body specifically, but probably nowhere else either, right? So this peach performance fabric is a little bit heavier weight, but it's not hot, okay? It's really comfortable and breathable to wear. And there is no show through when bending, stretching, moving. You guys are going to absolutely love this fabric. And I will say the fabric is pretty pricey, but again, Sulky being amazing, they have put this kit on super, super sale because of our special event. So basically for the price of the fabric, you're gonna get that action back stabilizer and loads of thread. You get six spools of Sulky thread, two to choose from for your embroidery and four to use for the construction of your pants. The reason you're getting four spools for the construction is because if you have a serger, you're gonna use a four thread overlock stitch for these pants. So you will have four spools to put on your serger. If you don't have a serger, there's also information of how to set up your sewing machine so that you can sew these pants and have no problems at all. You're gonna set it up for a stretch stitch. There's all kinds of tips that you can consider for also not stretching the fabric while you're sewing and all kinds of things, okay? So if you choose to use only your sewing machine, you will still have those four thread spools and you might go through maybe a spool and a half, but it's a nice neutral black color that you can use for other things as well. Perhaps even the project I'm gonna share with you today. So still a really great deal on that kit. As I mentioned, basically for the price of the fabric, you're also getting six spools of thread and the brand new action back stabilizer, which right now you can only get in this kit. So. I will get off my soapbox about these pants, but as you can tell, I'm very excited about them. That's actually me modeling the pants. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know, it's kind of hard to get me to model something like lounge pants, but I love them so much. I went ahead and did it anyways. <laughs> and I have two pair already. I have a pair in uh, the black colorway that is in the kit. And I also made a pair in sort of a navy colorway. I was trying to decide between the two for the kit and ultimately I thought all of you would prefer the, the uh, double brushed black. I believe it's called double brushed. Um, at any rate, great neutral color, goes with everything and you will absolutely love it. Uh, Marvel says, how much is the pants session? I don't wanna leave the webcast to check it out. Great question. All right, the pants session is $19.99. And as I mentioned, you get a $10 pattern. You get an embroidery design that I believe is valued at $6.99. And you also get that bonus copycat leggings uh, tutorial, which is another $9.99 on top of that. So great value for this session. You get a ton out of it. Um, and the kit, I believe, Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm thinking it's $36.99 for the kit. So if you're joining us today for Treasured Threads, you want to grab up one of those kits at $39.99. Then you can also grab up your embroidered lounge pants kit for $36.99. And boom, you got your free shipping at sulky.com. And you don't have to pay anybody to deliver your goods. Because nobody likes to do that. Am I right? All right. So yes, it is a great bargain and um, I hope you will all join for both of these events. Um, all right, let's see. Oh, Marilyn says, how soon can we download the lounge pant pattern? I have purchased the class. Great, great, great question. So uh, typically we wait until the all the lessons are ready for viewing on April 17th to give you your pattern and your embroidery designs. The reason for that is in the entire first lesson for this session, we go over how to read these particular patterns, how to work with patterns from Amanda's bundles, 
how to print only the size that you need, only the style that you're using, um, how to tile the pages, how to prepare that entire pattern for the rest of the class. So I would hate for anybody to go in early and just download it and print the whole thing. And all of a sudden you may have wasted 30 pages of, of your computer paper and all that ink, right? So there may be some people who are very well versed in using digital patterns who totally, you know, use these all the time and they're ready to rock and roll. But for those who have never done it before or, you know, maybe they've done it once or twice, but they need a refresher, I really like to wait until all of the videos are ready for viewing on the 17th because that way you have all the support that you need when you get your pattern and you're not going into it blindly, all right? So that's really the reason why we wait until the whole course drops on the website. Um, now, that being said, the day before, when you get your email saying, hey, don't forget, the session is going to be available tomorrow for viewing, there is a link within that email to the pattern and the embroidery design. So if you do want to get a little bit of a leg up, you can download them there, save them to the, your computer, and then the next day when everything's ready, you already have them downloaded. But I do caution those of you who have never worked with a digital pattern or are unfamiliar with Amanda's bundles, um, or you know maybe this is your first garment sewing project, I really you know, hope that you wait until you watch at least the first set of videos in the first lesson so that you have that background, you have that knowledge, you can go to printing um, and sorting and tiling your pattern and you know, you're, you're better off for it. So I hope that that was a long answer to your question, but I hope that um, clears it up a little bit. Um, Leslie says, could you tell us the manufacturer of the fabric? Another great question. So the uh, fabric also comes from Amanda's bundles. Um, Amanda's bundles is um, led by Amanda Carita, who used to own So So English Fabrics. So if you're familiar with So So English Fabrics, Amanda has started Amanda's Bundles and she gets the same, uh, you know, fantastic fabrics that she used to get over there at So So English and even more. So when I talked to her about this peached performance fabric, she was like, you are gonna love it and it embroiders like a dream and it just feels so great on your skin. And I said, okay, send me some. As soon as I got it in the mail, I was like, we have to bring this to the masses and everyone's gonna love this fabric. So this is my pair of pants, okay? And I just wanna show you how, even if I stretch it a ton, you can't see anything through this. This is one layer of fabric. It's so nice. When you get it, you just want to sleep with it. It's just the best. Um, so she, I don't actually know the origin origin of the fabric, but she does source it all. So I hope that answers your question a little bit. Um, and, you know, without working for her directly, um, I don't really know the 100% answer to that, but... It does come from Amanda's bundles. Um, we also have a second kit that has two different fabric prints you can choose from. It's actually the kit for the copycat leggings, which is the bonus content within our lounge pants session. So if you wanna create the copycat leggings, you can actually use the embroidered lounge pants kit because it has the same amount of fabric and the same type of fabric that you need for that. Or you can grab up the copycat leggings kit, which has the same amount of fabric, but in a different substrate. So the embroidered lounge pants kit has the black double or the black peached performance fabric. And the copycat leggings kit has a double brushed poly spandex. 
So it's a little bit stretchier, a little bit tighter fitting fabric, and it comes in a brushed pink color or what we're calling a galaxy print. So the galaxy print is like a grayish, blackish, you know, if you experienced the eclipse yesterday, it was kind of the eerie tone that happened right during the eclipse. Um, and there's, you know, a little bit of stars and, you know, um, uh, just galaxy Milky Way-ish type print to that fabric. So if you would rather have a print for your embroidered lounge pants, then go with the copycat leggings kit. If you like the look of the peached performance, then go with the embroidered lounge pants kit. So either one will work for either the copycat leggings or the lounge pants. I know it's confusing, but hopefully you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. Um, Holly says, I haven't sewn a garment for ages. You know, I think that even if you are intimidated by garment sewing or it's been a long time, you know, when you're sewing a pant like this, you really have minimal seams. The majority of the work, as is true for most of our sewing, comes in the cutting process, right? We spend so much time measuring, right? Measure twice, cut once, and cutting out the pieces. When we get to the actual sewing, it's like, boom, it's almost done. Especially if you're using a serger and you're finishing those seams and sewing them at the same time, this thing goes together so quickly. And quite honestly, the embroidery is rather quick as well because all the embroidery is in one thread color. So you thread up your machine with either a sparkly poly sparkle gold thread or our poly deco solid gold thread. And you can even do a tone on tone and use one of the black thread spools for the embroidery. And it would be super, super subtle but you would still have that really neat embellishment. Once you load all that up into your machine, it's gonna sew out all in one color stop. So everything comes together rather quickly as long as you have the right setup going on and you've prepped yourself and prepped your area, prepped your machine, you're good to go. All right. Okay, so enough about our sessions and all of our events going on this afternoon. Um, I wanna get to today's project. Now, when I was talking about our Treasured Threads webcast and using fa uh, fabric panels as sort of cheater cloth for creating patchwork in a fraction of the time, our projects today are also all about getting a look of patchwork in a fraction of the time. We all want more time in the universe. And, you know, foundation piecing is really a great time saver, especially when we're piecing together small little pieces or very narrow strips. And you don't always have to use a paper when you're doing foundation piecing. So what I'm gonna talk about today is foundation piecing, not foundation paper piecing. The foundation that we're going to use is a piece of batting. Now, I also love foundation paper piecing, especially if we are piecing along or adding, you know, weird angles or tiny little pieces of things um, that would be otherwise almost impossible to piece without the use of paper and, you know, those printed lines on our paper. But if you're doing something simple like strip piecing or log cabin piecing, foundation piecing is such a great time saver. So what I'm going to show you today can be applied to a coaster, a mug rug, a placemat, a table runner, even quite honestly, a larger quilt. Um, a larger quilt becomes a little bit more unwieldy um, to do this method on, but it can be done. All right. So, first off, you need some fabric scraps. I should probably show you what this looks like before we start diving into making it. Um, and, you know, you, you can start with scraps or you can start with yardage and cut 
your strips that you need for the strip piecing. Um, but let me go ahead and show you what this looks like first and foremost so that you have an idea of what we're actually making. I call this the mom and me mug rug, but notice that I added a loop to it as well. So this really does double duty. It can be a mug rug, it can be a pot holder, it can be a trivet. So I just added the loop to it to have that flexibility to use it different ways. And the only reason I'm calling it mom and me is because I found the cutest little hedgehog fabric in my stash and it had a big hedgehog facing a little hedgehog. And I thought that is so cute for mom and me and I can fussy cut this little motif and make it the center focal point of my little project. So um, I believe I started with a fat quarter of the focal print, which I also used for the backing and the binding and the hanging loop. The other pieces of fabric were just scraps that I cut into one and a half inch wide strips and I used those to create my log cabin piecing design. So first things first, we're going to start with our piece of batting. I just used a low loft batting for the back of, or for the foundation of the project. Now for all the exact dimensions, everything that you need, this entire project is on the Sulky blog at blog.sulky.com. I also link to it directly in the description of today's post. So if you're not seeing all the links for everything I mentioned here today, you can click on that see more button and everything will pop out. You'll see the links for the Ireland trip, the Bali trip, our treasured threads webcast and kit. You'll see the links for the embroidered lounge pants session and kit and also the link for this blog post here so you can get the full tutorial. You don't have to take notes or anything while we're talking right here. You can head onto the blog right after, grab up the PDF of the blog post, and you'll be good to go with all the yardage requirements and everything if you wanna make it exactly the way I did here. All right, so first we're gonna start with our piece of batting and of course, fabrics of our choice and you're gonna cut your piece of batting roughly to the dimensions that you want for your final piece. Now, I would add at least two inches to the length and width so that after quilting it, you can trim it down to the exact size that you want. Now, for a mug rug, it could be eight or 10 inches. That's it, you could finish this in no time. For, you know, a little bit larger mug rug, trivet, pot holder, maybe 12 inches square, you get the idea. So if you wanna make a placemat, maybe I'm just gonna say 12 by 16, something like this, um, or you get the idea. Table runner, cut it to the length and width, width that you want and add a few inches to the length and width for you know extra ease when you're quilting. So I have my low loft batting square and I take that cute little fussy cut fabric square or rectangle, if you will, and I just centered it right on the batting. I used my trusty KK2000 temporary spray adhesive to just make sure it's not gonna go anywhere. And that is the start. I'm just uh, securing that down with some spray adhesive. So now I take one of my fabric strips, place it right sides facing my little fussy cut square or rectangle, and I'm just gonna sew along the, uh, the edge there where the two fabrics meet. I wanna make sure to stop sewing right at the edge of my fussy cut fabric square. So there I have my seam is sewn. And I should mention, I use the Sulky 50 weight cotton thread that I was talking about earlier, which happens to be our giveaway today for one lucky viewer who is watching and commenting and engaging with today's post. I'm gonna give away a six pack of our 50 weight cotton thread in our patriotic sampler. And you'll understand why I'm giving away the patriotic sampler in a moment. All right, but I like using that 50 weight thread 
for actually both the piecing and the quilting of this because it's so lightweight yet very strong. It's so lightweight that you don't feel any sort of telltale thread bump after you've done all this piecing. So especially in a piece, you know, especially if you're foundation piecing and you have all these little pieces that you're working with and intersecting seams and, and uh, seam allowances, you want it to be as flat as possible when you are doing your quilting so that, you know, you don't have these lumps and bumps that your needle is trying to pass over. So that 50 weight thread really is the ticket. So after we sew that strip, we are going to fold it to the right side. You can finger press it a little bit and we're just going to trim it off so that it's flush with that center fussy cut print. So now you can use a little bit more KK2000 and spray your additional fabrics piece down so it's nice and flat and you're ready to move and rotate the piece and add another strip. So you're going to keep moving around that focal point, rotating your batting as you go with each additional strip. And then you get this log cabin look and it's so simple. You didn't have to, you know, deal with any fabric stretch or these small, small pieces when you are doing this without that batting foundation. So once you get your strips so that they are totally covering your piece of batting, now we can head to the machine and quilt it. This is where you can really have fun um, and choose different threads, choose different quilting stitches, all that good stuff. But before we quilt it, we need to create our quilt sandwich. So we've got our backing fabric wrong side up on our work surface. And then I added a piece of insulated batting right on top of the backing fabric, just in case I want to use this as a trivet or a pot holder. The insulated batting while you're using this will take the heat away from your hand so that you can use this safely for hot items coming out of the oven or putting on your table, what have you. Insulated batting also comes with instructions for what side to put up where, unless you get a dual-sided insulated batting. And typically it is recommended to also use a, a layer of regular batting on top of your insulated batting. So since we already have that attached to our top fabric as our foundation for piecing, we're gonna add that extra layer of insulated batting between the layers. If you are planning to use this just as a mug rug, um, not as something that might need to absorb heat, you can just put another piece of batting in its place. But you can see that's why my batting looks silver because it has this coating on it, um, this insulation rather, that's part of the batting you know, structure. So these are my layers. I'm gonna use more of that KK2000 to secure all of these layers so that I can quilt it. I don't have to do any basting or pinning. It's such a small project that the KK is going to make sure none of my layers shift while I'm doing the quilting. And for the quilting, I kept it super duper simple and I just did a straight line quilting and followed the lines just inside of where I pieced them, about, you know, an eighth to a quarter of an inch. And I really started next to my little focal point print so that I could kind of frame my two little hedgehogs. And then I just continued around and around um, following the log cabin um, pattern. Here you can see it a little bit better of how I just followed along all of my stitching lines. All right, so after you add your quilting, and again, experiment with fun decorative stitches. This is such a small project, you can really have fun with it. You can choose a wavy line stitch, serpentine stitch, a wave stitch, or just a fun zigzag, or check out all the decorative stitches that you have at your disposal built into your sewing machine and 
Yes, I used the 50 weight thread for the quilting on the top and in the bobbin, but you could also go with a heavier weight thread, like a 30 weight cotton thread or even a blendables thread. And I would still use the 50 weight cotton that matches in the bobbin when going up um, in thread weight on the top. Um, but you know, again, for something that is a small project like this, you could try your hand at free motion stitching. Drop the feed dogs and start moving your fabric all around and really have fun with it. You can sign your name to it, whatever you would like to do. All right, so after your quilting, square up your little mug rug, pot holder, coaster, whatever size you're making, and then you're gonna go ahead and add your binding. I just made a quick self binding using a leftover fabric that I had from the backing and from my focal print fussy cut square and stitched it all the way around in the same manner that I would bind a quilt. Also, don't forget, if you're adding a hanging loop because you want the flexibility of also using this as a pot holder or a trivet, make a loop using your binding fabric um, and just tuck the loop into the back of your binding before you sew up uh, the rest of your binding in the last step. So what I did is I hand sewed the binding along the entire um, back of my, we'll just call it a pot holder at this point, and I hand sewed where my little hanging loop was. Then I flip the hanging loop so that it's right side up, and I just did a little top stitch right along the corner just to reinforce it a little bit. Make sure that my hand stitches were nice and secure and that when I go and hang this on a hook by my oven door or what have you, it's not gonna you know, pop out. All right, so very, very easy and simple to accomplish. This is a large mug rug, big enough for a huge cup of coffee and a little bit of treats, or again, you could use this as your pot holder or trivet, makes a great gift for Mother's Day, for birthdays, for any holiday, and you can really personalize it. This is a great project for beginners, for people who have never tried a quilt before, uh, because it's really low stress, you know? You're just sewing and trimming as you go along. You don't have to make sure that all of your strips are the same width even. You just wanna keep adding and you can cut as you go as well so that they all start fitting together. All right. So that is project number one, using a foundation piecing method. And the reason that I'm bringing in our patriotic quilt sampler thread pack to the party is because I decided to also make an American flag placemat using the same technique. So I thought these were super cute for upcoming, you know, Memorial Day, July 4th, really any time of year when you just wanna, you know, get patriotic. Um, and again, this can also be done in different sizes. You can make this placemat size, table runner size. You could make it a larger quilt size. You can make it a small mug rug. You're just gonna start with a rectangle instead of starting with a square. And we're gonna piece this in, let's just say like, three different sections. All right, so we're first going to start our strip piecing along that upper right side quadrant, or not really quadrant because it's not divided into fours, but the upper right section, all right? So I've got my strips on top of my batting foundation. And again, I start with my first one right side up placed flush against the edge of my batting, and I'm using that KK2000 to just make sure that it is stuck in place, not going to go anywhere, no need for any pins. So I'm starting with a red fabric strip, and then I'm going to put a white strip over the top, matching the raw edges that meet, and I'm just gonna sew along that line and I'm gonna keep adding my strips for this section. All right, so here's another red fabric print, and there it is pressed to the right side, 
And I really do love that you can continue adding the KK2000 and then sticking your next strip that you've sewn down. It is so much easier than trying to go take this over to the ironing board, press it down nice and flat, bring it back, ba ba ba, all the back and forth. You can really just press it to the right side using your hand, finger press along that seam, give it a little shot of KK2000, and just keep moving right along. And you don't have to have these strips cut to size yet, but if you do, that's great. Um, but again, you could have your strip just going off of your batting and trim them with each subsequent uh, strip like I did in the um, previous one. All right, so we're just going to continue moving along with a white printed fabric strip and keep moving forward until we have enough fabric strips to create that upper right side. So let's see, let me go back one. It looks like I did about five strip rows before I added my left starry fabric square. Okay. And all of this is actually coming up on the sulky blog. So I'm kind of giving you this tutorial um, with a little bit of advance notice because we're using the same technique I was presenting in that pot holder mug rug project. So I thought that it was a great time to also bring you this project, but it's a little bit of a sneak peek. So stay tuned on the sulky blog. If you want the whole tutorial with all the measurements and all of that good stuff, it's going to be coming up on the sulky blog. And if you would like to be notified when we have a new blog post or new tutorial there, all you have to do is subscribe to the blog and you'll get an email every time we have a new tutorial up there on the blog. So you won't miss a thing and you will be all set on the American flag placemat tutorial as well when that one goes live. And really, honestly, you only get an email every time we have a blog post. So you're not going to get inundated with all of those, you know, crazy emails that we all get all of the time. All right. So once we have that upper right section done, we're going to take our blue fabric. And I was lucky enough to find a blue fabric that had white stars on it. But you could certainly use any kind of blue fabric. Um, actually, when I found this one, um, it was in a fat quarter bundle. It wasn't even on a bolt. So I just grabbed up the whole fat quarter bundle. But you could also use, oh, I have this around here somewhere. You could just use, you know, maybe a navy fabric that's got white dots on it. You get the idea. The illusion of your uh, stars on the blue fabric. So I have it right side down over the top of my strip pieced unit, and I'm going to sew along that edge that meets. Then I'm going to press it to the right side, smooth it down with my hand, give it a little KK2000 between the layers, make sure it's nice and flat. Now I can continue strip piecing the rest of the flag. So I start with my white fabric strip because that's where I left off over in the corner. And we're just going to continue in the same fashion with our red and white fabric strips. So you'll go all the way down the whole length and width of your batting piece. And now just like we did with our uh, mug rug, coaster, etc., now we do our quilt sandwich and prepare our uh, sewing machine for quilting. So I have my backing fabric wrong side up. I have another layer of batting, and then I have my foundation pieced flag. So all three layers are going to go together with the KK2000. And actually, um, if you don't want as much loft on your placemat, you could really just secure your foundation pieced flag to the backing fabric at this point. But I wanted a little bit more loft when I added the quilting, a um, little bit more loft, you know, when plates are put upon the placemat. So if you're using this and making maybe a larger table runner or, um, a, you know, American flag quilt or throw, um, then perhaps you would leave out that second layer of batting, but I like it a little bit extra plush. So you'll make your quilt sandwich and then 
What I did was I just quilted in the ditch along all of the seams. I didn't add any other quilting to this because all of my fabrics had such a good print to them, and I didn't really want to compete with that. Now, in hindsight, I was thinking maybe along my blue fabric that had all of my stars on it, that maybe I would do, you know, a free motion star motif or something like that in that area. Or I could choose a star stitch on my machine in my decorative stitch menu and stitch stars all across in consecutive lines along the blue square. So in thinking about it a little bit more, I would have embellished that area a bit more, but I just left that completely free of quilting and stitched in the ditch along all of the seams. So there I have all of my quilting done and I just need to square up um, my edges, make sure everything is nice and symmetrical, and then I can go ahead and add the binding. I just chose a neutral gray binding. You could go with a white or whatever you're using for the backing of this as well, and you're good to go. So I always start on the right side of my piece with adding the binding. I wrap it around to the back and I hand sew. That's really, it's just ingrained in me. It's how I learned to bind quilts and quilty projects. But I know there's lots of schools of thought out there on, you know, better or easier or quicker ways to add binding. So you do you and apply your binding how you like to. And yes, those Clover Wonder Clips are just, I mean, whoever invented those, thank you so much because they're amazing. And if you don't have any yet, they are available at sulky.com. <laughs> Once you try them, you will never go back. Just saying. All right. So after you do your binding, you have your completed placemat and you can set your patriotic table. Make as many of these as needed for an outdoor gathering or just your, you know, indoors patriotic tablescape. And I think that these are just precious. You could make these, again, as little coasters, as little mug rugs, as a wall hanging even. So um, a very, very simple way to do narrow strip piecing um, on a foundation, making it a lot more stable and sturdy as you go, and eliminating the need to cut all of these pieces ahead of time um, and, you know, as you know, with a lot of quilt projects, you have to be pretty persnickety about how you're cutting and making sure you're not cutting off corner points and making sure all of your fabrics are exactly the same width. This is a little bit more free form and you can get to the fun of quilting, especially when you're going to do multiple placemats um, or multiple gifts. Um, you know, we still want to put our handmade stamp on it, but maybe we want to assembly line things a little bit to make them a little quicker and easier. All right. So I'm going to go through the questions for today. Um, so if you do have a question, make sure to put it in the live chat and um, we will address them now and make sure you are engaging with the post today, giving me your questions, giving me those emojis and that way you are automatically eligible to win today's gift from Sulky, which is a six pack of our 50 weight cotton in the patriotic sampler assortment. This includes the reds, the whites, the blues, all of those great colors that you're going to need for our, all of our patriotic holidays coming up. Marianne says, yes to wonder clips. I can never have enough. <laughs> all right. Um, Bonnie says this would also be great on a bag as a pocket. Great idea. Um, can you spray KK inside? If you mean indoors, you can. Um, a lot of people like to say, you know, be in a well-ventilated area. Don't spray it with your face right next to it. Um, but it is the most eco-friendly spray adhesive on the market. There are no, um, what are they called? CF? I don't know all the chemicals. <laughs> there are no harmful things in the spray adhesive. I mean, I don't recommend just spraying it right next to your eyeballs or, you know, your mouth, that type of thing, but it is air soluble. 
So I think that's one of the really great things about this spray adhesive is that after about 48 hours or so, it's going to just dissipate into the air. So, you know, you don't have this stuff gumming up your needles or, um, you know, it's easily repositioned as well. Um, it's just really, really great stuff. And honestly, once you go KK, you never go back. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. VOCs, Jana. Yes. No harmful VOCs. I want to say that's correct. There's lots more information about KK2000 on the Sulky website, though. Um, and it's much more knowledgeable than me thinking on the spot. Uh, so head on over to sulky.com. Look for that KK2000. I link directly to it in the description of today's post as well. So you can learn all about it from there. There's lots of information in the item description there as well. All right. Susie Q says, I want to learn how to quilt. This will be my first try. Excellent. Because you can get to the quilting part of quilting much faster when the piecing goes together quite quickly as well. So yay. That is great. All right. Love a patriotic project. Fantastic. Loving the flag. Great. Let's see. I want to make sure that we are addressing anybody's question. What a clever pattern. Great. Good reminder to use a walking foot. A great invention. Yes, you know, um, a walking foot, I, I should have mentioned this, when you are dealing with that batting, you don't have anything underneath it, right? Um, and if you have a particularly heavy weight or um, um, fluffy batting that you're dealing with on the bottom, a walking foot can help, yes. I actually have an integrated dual feed foot on my machine. So all I do is I pull down this little mechanism. It attaches to the underside of my foot. And then just like that, I have a walking foot on anything I want to work on. So I don't have to take off my foot and attach a separate walking foot. Um, that's why I always forget to talk about a walking foot because mine is just integrated. I'm very lucky in that regard. Um, but if you are dealing with a more textured, fluffy batting, you can also use a layer of sulky soft and sheer stabilizer on the backside of the batting. So when you are doing this foundation pieced method, the um, soft and sheer stabilizer is what is against the feed dogs rather than the layer of batting. And you're not wasting any fabric by putting a piece of fabric behind there and then having to add more fabric when you do your quilting. So that's another great tip as well. All right. Daryl says, like this, such an easy method. Um, Cynthia says, I know what I'm doing this afternoon. <laughs> well, hopefully you are also joining us at 2 p.m. Eastern time for our Treasured Threads faux patchwork webcast with Amy Berrickman. This is an entirely free event, and Amy will be joining us live over at sewingonline.sulky.com in about an hour. Um, so I hope you are all registered. If you are not, get over there to sewingonline.sulky.com. Register for the webcast so you can join us for that. There's really nothing better than learning directly from the designer, the person who designed these fabric panels and conceptualized all these projects. You get to talk to her directly, give her your questions, get those answers, create some beautiful projects. So I hope you will join us for that in about an hour. Also, be sure if you are interested in our Ireland tour, head on over to Craft Tours. Use that link that I put in the chat today and you can check out our tour there. You can also get on a payment plan for Bali if you are interested in joining us in October. It's better to sign up early because then you can get on those payment plans with Craft Tours and make it a little bit more manageable to join us in October for the trip of a lifetime. All right. Also be sure to sign up for Embroidered Lounge Pants, our sewing session. This will be available for viewing next Wednesday. So go ahead and sign up, get registered, grab your kit, and you'll be ready to go when all the videos are ready for viewing. 
All right. So many ideas today. I hope that um, I have inspired you to get to your sewing machine. And I'll see you in about an hour with Amy Barrickman over at sewingonline.sulky.com. And be sure to join me next Tuesday for another So What?